Now to create a design that uses a split complementary color strategy. So the split complementary color strategy is different from the complementary color strategy in that instead of using the complementary color, you're going to use the two hues that are on either sides of the complement and you're not going to include the complement. Okay, so again you're going to use variations in value and saturation of your hues and in this case we are going to have three colors that we will be using to manipulate in this design. So I'm going to choose red as my initial starting color and then I'm going to choose the colors that are adjacent to the complement of red. Well, I know that the complement of red is cyan, but I'm not going to use cyan because, again, with the split complement, you do not use the complementary color. You do not include that complementary color in the design. Instead, you go either to the right or to the left of the complement to choose a color that is next to the complement. Now, in the case of using this additive subtractive color wheel, this color wheel has a lot of extra intervals in it. So I'm actually going to go two over, so that I am two, two color um, intervals over from the complement. You, you would go too far if we went all the way to the green, because that would actually be including um, the colors that form a triad, which is a complementary strategy, which is a color strategy we're going to get to later. So. Um, for most color wheels, you would use the color that is adjacent. In this case, this color wheel is designed so that you use the colors that are two steps over from the complement. Now, once again, remember, you do not use the complement when you create a split complementary color design. So again, what I'm going to do is grab the eyedropper tool to select my colors. Um, oops. Deselect everything first, grab the eyedropper tool, select my red, and place it into the tints, shades, and tones chart that I've set up over here on the right hand side. Then I'm going to grab the, the first color that is adjacent to my color's complement and put it into the first chart. And then I'm going to grab the second color that is adjacent to the complement and put it into the second chart. Now, Again, because we're creating tints, shades, and tones, we need the initial starting box to be white, and then we need the shades to go to black, and then we need the tones to go to gray. Now you can select any color gray you want to, and of course you can make as many tones charts if you would like to. If you'd like to make multiple tones charts to get multiple variations in value of your tones, you can do that as well. And again, I've set up these blends initially, but again to walk through how to set up that blend, we go to Object Blend, Blend Options, choose Specified Steps from the drop-down menu, and in this case um, I've just selected five. You can make as many as you want to. Um, you can also just make a gradient if you want to. You don't have to choose specified steps. And then this is how you would actually blend the squares together. You grab the blend tool and just click from one box to the next. And make sure you, you deselect everything by using the black arrow tool just to click anywhere on the board before blending the next row so that you make sure to isolate each of your blends. So now, that's a really quick and easy way to create reference charts that you can then use to create a design based on your variations in value and saturation, tints, shades, and tones of your split complementary colors. So again, once again, you need to make sure that you expand your blend before you can actually select these colors to use them in your design. So I'm just going to select my uh, gradients, my blends um, with the black arrow tool, clicking and dragging a box around them to select them and go to Object, Expand and hit OK. And then now I can easily go ahead with the white arrow tool, pick up my colors in my blends and throw them into my design and start designing. Now this is where the, the bulk of the work comes in because this is where you're thinking about how these colors are interacting in the design, how they're going to create um, a well-balanced design. And one of the things that you need to balance is the use of contrast with variety because basically um, contrast is going to help you to create a focal point in your design, a, dy a dynamic area of interest, um, an area of visual interest towards which you want your uh, audience to look. 
the area of the composition where you want to have the most contrast is the area where you want your colors to, to um, contrast with one another. And that's going to help draw attention to that area. It's, it's creating a focal point. And then, of course, areas where you won't, don't want so much attention but maybe still want to create um, harmony, you're going to use colors that kind of work together harmoniously. So it's a matter of playing around with things like this. And in this case, this little simple um, example I've created, I created the most amount of contrast in this area by putting the brightly saturated red set against a dark blue to create value contrast and also hue contrast. And then in other areas of the design, there is less contrast in the hues as they um, are just varied slightly between one another. And then of course you play around with the stroke as well. It might be interesting to try to actually use the stroke and um, maybe give it some thickness by bumping up the pixel um, weight of the stroke or changing the value of the stroke. You can also change the color of the stroke to one of your colors in your design as well. And that can also be an extra way to get creative with your designs and explore different um, compositional options.